Hello my loves, welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox. Today we're going to work on a new series that I've been wanting to introduce to my channel for a while. It's called Study Sessions. It'll be more of a chatty video where I kind of talk about my art process a little bit more candidly or I don't know, as more candidly as I can. It'll force me to draw and practice things I'm not very used to drawing. In this series it's really about documenting my studying when it comes to art. So drawing hands, bodies, landscapes. If I'm in a rut, I I'd like to try some different mediums. It's basically a whole series about experimentation and growing. I think it's really important as an artist to constantly be evolving your array of skills and always growing. I don't like studying very much because I find it really confronting and uh, really humbling because the whole process you're like, oh man, I feel like I kind of suck at making art a lot of the time. I wanted to do this series because it holds me accountable. It'll really force me to draw things that I'm not used to. I think by putting it out there to the universe it'll really buckle me down and force me to really work hard on expanding my skill level. I was working on a commission for a client and uh, I ran into some troubles when it came to the landscape elements and more of the crystal elements. So today I'm going to be focusing on that. Basically just painting some crystals and landscapes and yeah, see where it goes. So let's head into the sketchbook and get into it. <laughs> First of all, with some reference material. I've got to practice these stairs here. I've used this piece in the final work that I'm working for for a client. I've used this image for um, as some reference, like it's just a little element in it. See the texture here on the concrete? That is something I definitely need to practice. And then I also am putting an element of crystals in this piece as well. So I used this piece yesterday f as the reference and I was just not getting it down. The angles weren't right as well so I'm probably gonna practice that one as well and then let's also practice something with a little bit more depth. I pinned a bunch of these photos with ultraviolet photography I believe. I think they're all by Richard Moss but if you need to see any of these images you can go to my Pinterest. And which one should we go with? I've already done these two. I kind of half asked this one. Yeah let's try this one. So we've got Crystals, this pink forest, it's got lots of really good dips in it and like some good perspectives in there. Yeah, so let's get into it. Let's do that. Okie dokie. I'm gonna start off with the crystal first. I have done some crystals in the past. I tried one over here as well, but it's okay. I just, I really don't feel as strong with them just yet. So and I really love crystals. They're beautiful. I just really want to do them justice. I want to be able to paint them a lot better than I have been. Yeah, let's start off with the crystal. All right. I'm gonna probably start off on this page first. I'll probably, I don't know, do a whole spread here. Let's just do the overall like silhouette of it because I tend to like just do little sections and then get lost and I really just need to add my proper framework, my skeleton almost, you know. I feel like these uh, crystals are really intimidating to me because there's a lot going on in there. You know, there's a lot of elements going on here. So lots of facets. They're very detailed, you know, it's, they're, they're kind of overwhelming to look at. I'm not going to lie. Now, when I'm sketching these, like they're not going to be one for one. There's no way. There'll probably be lots of creative license in here where let me just get an eraser. You know, there's going to be a, a bit of creative license in this, so I don't want to be too pedantic as well. I just need to like get it out on paper and then, you know, the more I do them, the more I'll be able to understand what's going on. Because right now what I'm looking at, I'm, I'm really overwhelmed by this. This is a lot to take in. I'm just going to stop talking for a second and try and get the sketch out. Yeah, I'm going to try my absolute best to recreate what I see here. It's like, it's got a really beautiful like purpley pink. I've decided to put an overall wash on here because it's just, for me, it's easier to work with a mid-tone than kind of split my darks and my lights. I've got a very watered down gouache here, so I know with watercolor you're meant to go the other way, but 
Well, let's just do it this way and see how we go. I'm probably gonna try and work on a couple of things at once because, uh, hang on, it's got another little, I might be all over the place when I'm, in, when I'm doing this because I'm like trying to talk and paint at the same time. That's looking pretty good so far. I'll have to wait until that dries a little bit more to add a couple more layers. So I'm gonna move on to something else while that dries. Let's work on this field here. I'm probably just gonna do a tiny little thumbnail, mostly just because I wanna have the overall shapes and colors in there, but I don't wanna focus too much on like details. I think I get very, very lost in like little tiny details and I need to more work on my overall structure. Okay, so I'm gonna just draw this little triangle here and then um, yeah, sketch in the rest of it. Just try and get the proportions right. I feel like I don't, I don't draw enough so when you're drawing, you're really forced to focus on your line work and proportions a lot more in order for it to look correct. Uh, whatever that means is, you know, a lot of interpretations of that. I think I just don't draw enough and I don't draw a wide variety of things enough. So let's just focus on um, the overall proportions here. I mean, I'm probably going to do the same mediums for all of these sketches. I'm probably just gonna do like pencil and then like some gouache and then see how I go from there. Someone I really admire um, who's just incredible with landscapes is Max Berry. I feel like his landscapes are just so beautiful. His colors and everything, he chooses colors that I would have just never ever thought of picking. Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit here, I don't particularly love Australian landscapes. I think their arid nature, ugh, I'm not gonna lie. I think they're like a little bit ugly. I'm not talking about like the outback desert. I'm more talking about yellowy grass that New South Wales and Victoria mostly have. I never considered, mostly because I've been living around that area my whole life. Uh, I, I guess you're just so used to it and you're so climatized to it so you don't see it as being particularly special. But when you're going on road trips and you just see all that flat earth, ugh, it's so ugly. But uh, Max Berry makes me, feel, makes me, you know, look at landscapes so differently. He does like, landscapes of the Australian bush and I feel like they're just so much prettier than I really have ever seen them before. I don't know, I feel like that's pretty powerful if you can do that and you make you can make people see beauty and things that you never thought that you could see before, you know? That's that's powerful, right? I feel like I get a lot of comments of how people, you know, people comment on Instagram and on on here as well and say kind of similar things to them where it's like they feel really inspired and you know they feel like energized that kind of energetic feeling that you get from art is i don't know i don't really get that from many other things where you feel like renewed and excited because you've set you've seen something that was just really beautiful or you experienced you know some really amazing art so those those kind of feelings are priceless you know i find pencils really difficult to work with because the line really determines section by section you know it, there's a harshness when you use a pencil when you're using more like paint and watercolor the the line is literally blurred <sighs> Don't you find it so hard to talk about things without sounding like it's an absolute cliche? I might, with some of the other studies, I might just, um, I might actually just do three. I think if I work on something else, it might be a little bit too much. Originally, I think I, I wanted to do the four studies, but I think I'm just gonna stick to three because it seems like a little bit too much content otherwise, you know? I think everything I'm gonna work on is gonna be like this pinky color. I definitely need to invest in some different gouache colors and I wanna expand on this palette or I wanna, I wanna keep this palette, but I want to get like a couple more where I just have like all different kinds of blues and all different kinds of oranges, pinks, you know? I feel like a little bit limited with these colors and I know you can mix them, but it's just not quite the same. I just know for my technique, I just don't mix paints all that much. This piece here has more of, wait, what's it called when it's like dark around the edges of a photo? Oh, a vignette, that's what it is. I, I am so sensitive to color. You know, you will have noticed that I use so much color in my work. I'm, I'm like a color addict. I find I sometimes be blind to a few things because all I see is color. I think a lot of art that I'm attracted to or just like things in general, if they're not the right colors, I get really turned off by it. 
I hate when I'm painting and you just discover like you haven't la laid down your foundations correctly. Whatever. This is a study, all right? I'm allowed to make mistakes. I don't know why I'm just like delicately adding color to all of the mountains. Like I should just be dumping. This is my first layer. I should just be dumping a base down. Uh, all right. Lay that base down. Lay it down. Very loose. Super, super loose. So that looks like absolutely nothing right now, but hopefully in a couple more layers, it'll make sense. Let's go back to the crystals. Oh God, the crystals are so hard. Now going back from like the landscape like makes sense, you know, but these crystals make no sense. I don't understand. I'm gonna go in with the darker tones first. So it's got some like very, very dark purples in some areas. So I'm gonna just try and pop those in first. I usually like to start off with a mid-tone and then I'll add all of my darks and go dark, 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 dark. And then I'll go light, 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 light. So that's what I'm gonna do now. And people who can paint crystals, like, like, like I mean like real well, uh, you're a wizard and I want you to know that you're a wizard, okay? That kind of looks like that's all of the super dark stuff. Let's just go in with the more pinky stuff now. Okay. I filled it out a little bit more. It still looks very like a huge mess. I feel like mostly because with crystals, it has very defined facets. And at the moment it's a little bit blurry. I am losing my sense of direction a little bit with this, but I've just got to wait until it dries a little bit more and then I'll add some more layers to really add in that depth. So let's go back to the landscape. The landscape's like a breath of fresh air. The landscape's like nice and simple almost. I know it's got all these little details that I can kind of like put little impressionistic vibes in. So since I posted my favorite art supplies video, you guys have given me so many good tips on how to rehydrate my gouache. So I really appreciate that, that's awesome. Uh, I've also had a few people who've really recommended Holbein. When I go to the US, I'll buy some Holbein when I'm there, so. I'm looking forward to that because every single time I see people play with Holbein, it looks really good and really thick. I didn't go to art school. I did a Bachelor of Design in Fashion and Textiles at UTS in Sydney. That course almost killed me. That was hard. Eventually, I just found that I just didn't really like working in fashion. I think my first love has always been art. That just felt like more true to who I was in the end, to be quite honest. After doing that degree, it was really like, I don't think this industry is for me. Making art was just more my thing, you know? It feels like I'm constantly starting over again and I'm constantly learning, which is a good thing because if you're always learning, you're always growing. But after a while, it does get a little bit tiring because it's like, when am I just gonna be really good? I feel like I'm very hard on myself, but I, being hard on myself it seems to be the only way I, I grow. So look, I know I've got some good skills and I've made some really good paces that I'm very proud of. I just, I really want to get to a whole new level with my work. I want to be making like, you know, next level pieces. And the only way I'm going to be able to do that is if I really take the time out to do these kind of studies. People see my work and they, you know, obviously get really inspired by it and I'm really grateful for that. And to me, it's like mind blowing that I've been able to do what I do purely based out of hard work and dedication. I still don't feel like I've reached that point with my skills that I really want to get to. Maybe I'll never get to that stage. And I think I still have a real problem with comparing myself to other people and um, their work. But my end goal for where I want my work to be at is pretty much I want to be Hannah Yatta. How you can be a master at her age, insane. I, I, it's frustrating for me because I feel like I had to start all over again in my mid-twenties and really focus on making art. 
I, I, you know, I, it was like, oh, I could have been making art this whole time, but that's just the creative process and that's just life. You never, I was never going to come to that conclusion had I not gone to fashion school. Yeah, I guess that's just the process that I had to go through. And if you're somebody who's still in that mid stage where you don't really know where, what creative path you should be going on, honestly, you just have to say yes to everything and constantly be researching and trying things out. That's really the only way you're gonna find out that it's right for you but yeah I find that I compare myself so much to people my peers who have been you know who did who went to art school and who was just so much further with their skills than I am I just shouldn't be comparing myself I should be comparing myself to like my own work and where I was from when I graduated university to where I am now has been a huge leap and I think in the four years that I've been like really really trying to dedicate myself and hone in on my craft yeah I feel like I've come a long way so that's where I'm at at the moment I'm just going to let both of them dry for a little bit more. I'm going to go get lunch and then I'll be back after that. All right, so I'm back from lunch now. I had to close the curtains because the lighting was getting a little bit weird. All right, so right now I'm just going to erase some of the construction lines just so it looks a little bit neater and I can kind of see what I'm really looking at. It feels a little bit premature to do pencil, but it's so complicated looking right now so I think I might need some just so I can like really see what I'm looking at. I might work with a couple of pencils this is very untraditional for me actually uh, to go with pencil this so early but it's just um, really hard for me to see what the hell I'm doing right now so I need to outline a couple of things. So these are my favorite pencils Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils I guess I'll just try and like go over everything and sharpen everything up and then I'll probably go in with another layer of gouache. I love that I was so ambitious and I was like, let's do everything. Oh wait, no, let's just do two things. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy-ish with the results of the crystal and the landscape. Obviously, I feel like I can definitely go a lot more in depth with the details, but in the end, it is a study. When you think of crystals, you think of them being very perfect and there are a lot of very jaggedy, asymmetrical elements to it. So I'm gonna keep that in mind for when I work on crystals more in the future. Yeah, I definitely wanna practice a lot more crystals. I've obviously done crystals before, but none that are this complicated, like a real cluster of them. So I think for my first one, I did all right. Now this landscape, I still don't know how I feel about my landscapes. I think they're really boring still. Half the time I paint things because I love the subject matter and with landscapes I still find them boring you know I just don't they just don't inspire me very much but I I think I just need to keep pushing through and try and find the beauty in a lot of things. So yeah I think episode one of study sessions pretty successful. Uh, I'm excited to keep going and see where I end up with this series. I hope by doing the series I definitely grow a lot more with my art skills so I think that's that's it for now I think my main tip is to just keep going with it and uh, practicing things you're not used to is really hard but it will be worth it in the end I remember having similar thoughts for when I first started painting faces when I whenever I draw or paint a face now it's so much easier so you just need to build up that muscle memory and eventually your head will be able to wrap around it a little bit more okay so that's it for me today thank you so much for watching you can go find me on Facebook and Instagram and make sure you bell ding dong that button and if you want to support the channel go over to my web store as well because you guys have been so amazing over there seriously
killing it. Thank you so much. It means so much to me. I will zeek to you later. Catch you in the next one. Bye. Love ya. Bye.